following for two blocks, blowing our horns, sirens, doing everything that we could possibly do to get him to pull over. He just oblivious to us. There's probably not a call I haven't gone out on where you haven't had to do a defensive driver driving maneuver because people were not paying attention. Time is it up in essence. Emergency crews never know what they'll face when they answer a call. Whether it's firefighters, police, or ambulance, all they know for sure is that someone is in desperate need at the other end of the line. And the last thing anyone needs in that situation is a rolling traffic jam. Sometimes it really gets confusing and bottlenecked in and there's no place to go really. Sharing the road is one thing, but when it comes to red lights and sirens, these guys should always have the right of way. For one thing, it's the law. For another, a vehicle like a fire truck can weigh 10 times more than the average car. It can't stop as fast or corner as sharply. Cutting in front of one of these could prove disastrous. Every time someone doesn't pull over, every time a truck has to slow down and swing wide to go around, Every time cars try to squeeze through an intersection in front of an emergency vehicle, it makes them later and later and later. It only takes a minute for a fire to double in size or for a person to bleed to death. A few seconds either way can make a difference. Probably makes our response time, you know, instead of being two minutes, it's four minutes or five minutes, which is important when somebody's having a heart attack. So pulling over when you see the lights or hear the siren seems pretty straightforward. Turn the signal on and pull over to the side of the road. Pull off the side of the road. Pull off to the side. Yet in today's relatively soundproof cars, with the windows up and the music cranked, you may not get much of a warning, especially at highway speeds. When we're running at a rate of speed of around 55 mile an hour, we're outrunning our sirens. In essence, the sirens are ineffective because by the time you hear the siren, we're at your back door. Which makes it all the more important to be aware of your surroundings. And being aware doesn't mean just watching for lights and listening for sirens. It means watching other drivers as well. They may see or hear an emergency vehicle before you do. If everyone ahead of you suddenly decides to pull over to the right, you should probably think about it also. And when you do see an emergency vehicle, don't panic. Check your mirrors and blind spots, and as soon as you safely can, pull over to the right and stop. Don't slam on the brakes or cut off another car. The last thing you want to do is cause an accident trying to get out of the way. Also, make sure you're clear of any intersection, side street, or driveway when you stop. You could end up sitting right where the fire truck is headed. And stop means stop not slow down. The driver of that emergency vehicle can't be sure of what you're going to do if you're not at a full stop. The first thing I want them to do is just to pull over to the right and stop as soon as possible, as safely as possible. If they stop, then I know where they're at and I can get around them. Once that first fire truck races by, don't jump right back into the lane because chances are there's going to be another emergency vehicle following closely behind. If not a second fire unit, then probably a police cruiser or ambulance. These days, it's standard procedure for multiple units to respond to a call. But what if there's no way to pull over? Sitting at a stoplight with traffic crossing in front of you and an emergency vehicle barreling down from behind? We should yield and let them have the right away. But how can you get moved? Well, exactly, but I think mean, you should stop. You try to get out of the way as much as you can. Just because your lane is blocked doesn't mean you should run an intersection. If the fire truck or ambulance can cut into the oncoming lanes and go around, the best thing you can do is stay put until all the emergency vehicles have passed. By moving forward, you may inadvertently pull in front of a fire truck wanting to make a turn. Sometimes the intersections are completely blocked. It's hard to 
and you're sitting against a red light, uh, you just got to use good judgment. Try to slide over a little bit so the trucks can get through or wait till the light. Sometimes we have to sit there till the light turns green because the other people in the other directions won't stop. And so you just got to use good judgment to get out of the way. And getting out of the way goes for both sides of the road. Just because the emergency vehicle is coming towards you on the other side of the street doesn't mean it won't need your lane to get through. You have to realize that if you're on the oncoming lanes too, you still have to pull over to your right because that vehicle, the emergency vehicle, has the right to use any lane it possibly can safely, so your lane may have to be used too. Okay, so what should you do when you see the flashing lights? First of all, don't panic. Don't cause an accident trying to get out of the way. Don't block intersections or side streets or driveways. Make sure there's plenty of room for a fire truck or ambulance to make the corner, and don't turn in front of an emergency vehicle. Try to remember the basic thing of do not panic and move to your right, then you're going to be just fine. Because the people in, that are in the emergency vehicle, they're looking out for you too. They're watching what you're going to do. Remember to always be aware of your surroundings and what other cars are doing. If you see one emergency vehicle, check for more. And when you're stopped, stay stopped. We've been trained and went to classes and had defensive driving courses, but hey, we depend on the people out there to drive defensively too and maybe help us out a little bit. And always keep in mind, when you see red lights, go right. <laughs>